Hello. In today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving that every connected graph has a spanning tree. Recall that a spanning subgraph of a graph G is a subgraph of G containing all vertices of G. So a spanning tree of G is just a spanning subgraph of G that's also a tree, as in it's connected and has no cycles. This is a pretty straightforward proof by induction. Let's just see a quick example and then we'll hop right into that wonderful proof. Again, I must remove my spooky right glove so that I can properly handle the dry erase markers in order to better provide instruction. So here we go. Let's just see a quick example of a connected graph and a spanning tree of that connected graph. So here's a connected graph, kind of looks like two triangles just stitched together. Does this have a spanning tree? And maybe we call this graph G just for kicks. Of course it has a spanning tree, for example. We could just take these vertices and edges that I'm outlining with my finger. Those look something like this. This is a spanning tree. It's a subgraph of G that contains all vertices of G and it has no cycles and is connected. So that's an example of a spanning tree. It shouldn't be too surprising that every connected graph has a spanning tree. In a previous lesson, we proved that trees are minimally connected graphs. So in a way, to get any connected graph, you have to start bare minimum with a tree. And then you might add additional edges to it on top of the edges that it needs, the minimum number, to be connected. So not super surprising that every connected graph has a spanning tree, but just to be sure, let's see the proof. Again, this is gonna be an induction proof. In particular, we'll be doing induction on the size of the graph, the number of edges. So for the base step of our induction proof, we want to prove that all connected graphs with zero edges must have a spanning tree. That's pretty straightforward. What are all of the connected graphs with zero edges? Well, there's only one. It's this graph on a single vertex. This graph is already a tree. It's connected and has no cycles. Thus, it is its own spanning tree. And so, as is often the case with the basis step of an induction proof, it's pretty much trivial, nice and easy, we're done. We've just shown that every connected graph with zero edges has a spanning tree. Then, for the induction step of the proof, our induction hypothesis is to assume that all connected graphs with m edges for some non-negative integer m, all connected graphs with m edges must have a spanning tree. That's what we assume. That's our induction hypothesis. And this is a perfectly reasonable thing to assume because we've already shown that it's true for m equals zero. All connected graphs with zero edges have spanning trees. So we just assume it's true for some number of edges m. Then, as induction goes, we want to consider a connected graph G. So we'll say let G be a connected graph, which I'll abbreviate C-O-N-N. -N. Let G be a connected graph with one more edge, that is with M plus one edges. And we want to show that our induction hypothesis, assuming the result for all connected graphs with M edges, forces the result to also be true for all connected graphs with M plus one edges. And then by the principle of mathematical induction, we will be done. I'll just go ahead and erase this spanning tree from the board and leave our graph G up here just as an example to show kind of what we're doing in this proof, which is pretty straightforward. Now certainly, if G is itself a tree, if it's connected and has no cycles, then it is its own spanning tree. So it has a spanning tree and we are done. So then we can suppose that G is not a tree. If G is not a tree, then it must have a cycle. Like this graph here that isn't a tree, it's got a cycle here. Remember that trees are connected graphs with no cycles. So if our connected graph is not a tree, it's gotta have a cycle. 
Now, since we've assumed our result is true in the induction hypothesis for all connected graphs with M edges, we would like to delete an edge from our graph G that has M plus one edges so that we can apply the induction hypothesis. So let's delete an edge from some cycle of G. Since we know G has a cycle, let's delete an edge from one of its cycles. So since G is not a tree, we know it must have a cycle, so we delete an edge, say E, from a cycle of G. So now we're considering the graph G minus E. How many edges does G minus E have? Well, G had M plus one edges. We deleted one edge to get to G minus E, so G minus E certainly must have M edges. Thus, we can apply our induction hypothesis to G minus E as long as it is connected. But how do we know if it is connected? Well, actually, it must be connected because we deleted an edge from a cycle of G. And you can never disconnect a connected graph by deleting an edge that lies on a cycle. Very nice result. And I'll leave a link to a proof of that result in the description. Once more, in a connected graph, you cannot disconnect it by deleting an edge that lies on a cycle. So since that's what we've done here, we've deleted an edge from a cycle of G, we know the resulting graph G minus E is connected. For example, our graph G here, maybe we delete this edge from this cycle. And now this is what our graph G minus E could look like. We see, of course, it is still connected. Now we can use our induction hypothesis. Because G minus E has M edges and is still connected, we can apply our induction hypothesis, which tells us that G minus E must have a spanning tree. That is, a subgraph of G minus E that is connected, has no cycles, and contains all vertices of G minus E. But wait a minute. The vertex set of G minus E is the same as the vertex set of G, because all we did was delete an edge. We didn't delete any vertices. And since the edge set of G minus E is a subset of the edge set of G, because G minus E is a subgraph of G, we know that the spanning tree of G minus E must also exist in G, and thus we are done. Once more, we deleted an arbitrary edge E from a cycle of G, giving us the graph G minus E, which is a subgraph of G. It must have M edges because we just deleted a single edge, and we know it's connected because we deleted that edge from a cycle. Note that G minus E is also a spanning subgraph of G because we didn't delete any of G's vertices. Then we can apply our induction hypothesis to G minus E to, to know that it has a spanning tree. It's got to have a spanning tree, and that spanning tree is certainly also a spanning tree of G. Because they've got the same vertex sets, G and G minus E, and G minus E is a subgraph of G. So if this tree exists in G minus E, it also exists in G. And since it's a spanning tree of G minus E, which has the same vertex set as G, it's also a spanning tree of G, and we are done. Every connected graph must have a spanning tree, and that, my friends, is how you prove it. So, I hope this wonderful, spooky lesson helped you understand how to prove that every connected graph has a spanning tree. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.